Imagine a vast, sun-scorched desert stretching as far as the eye can see. Golden sand dunes rolling like waves, wind whipping loose grains into the air, and not a single flower in sight. Now, picture farmers scattering 100,000 rows of rose seeds across this barren landscape, a place where nothing but sand and wind have ruled for centuries. It sounds impossible. Experts said it would fail. The soil is salty, the rain almost non-existent, and the temperatures swing wildly between freezing nights and scorching days. Yet, these farmers pressed on, driven by a vision that seemed almost crazy, turning one of the harshest deserts on earth into a sea of blooming roses. A year later, what emerged was nothing short of miraculous. Instead of withering plants and shifting sand, there were roses thriving across tens of thousands of acres, transforming the desert into a vibrant, living garden. How did they do it? What made these delicate flowers survive where nothing else could? This is a story of ambition, science, and human ingenuity. The tale of how people defied nature to create a desert miracle. To understand just how daring this rose experiment was, we need to meet the desert itself, the Takamakan Desert in Xinjiang, China. Covering 337,600 square kilometers, roughly the size of three South Koreas, this is the second largest mobile desert in the world. The sand here isn't just flat. Massive dunes rise up to 300 meters, taller than a 100-story skyscraper, constantly shifting with the wind. The environment is extreme. Annual rainfall is less than 100 millimeters, while evaporation can exceed 3,400 millimeters, meaning water vanishes almost as soon as it lands. The soil is salty, temperatures swing wildly from freezing winters to scorching summers, and fierce winds sweep across the dunes like invisible bulldozers, eroding whatever they touch. Traditional crops and most plants simply cannot survive here. For decades, this region was considered agriculturally restricted, a place where even hardy grasses struggled, let alone delicate flowers. This is the stage on which the desert rose story unfolds, a place where survival itself is a battle, and where turning sand into a garden seems like a fantasy. Yet this harsh reality would only make the farmer's eventual success even more extraordinary. Long before the idea of planting roses in the Takamakan Desert, China had already embarked on an ambitious mission to tame the desert. Since 1978, experts and farmers have been working to build a green protective belt around the edges of the desert, a living barrier designed to stop the sand from spreading into farmland and towns. The scale of this effort is staggering, over 3,000 kilometers of green belts, combining tall trees, hardy shrubs, and protective vegetation, now line the desert's perimeter. These plants don't just survive, they act as natural shields, reducing wind speed, stabilizing the sand, and gradually turning the desert's edges into more hospitable land. Against this backdrop, the idea of planting delicate roses might have seemed reckless. Roses are known for their beauty, not their resilience. Yet this project wasn't just about aesthetics. It was a bold mix of environmental protection and visionary landscaping, showing that with careful planning and science, even the harshest desert could become a canvas for life. The Rose Project would push this vision to its limits, testing the very boundaries of human ingenuity against nature's toughest conditions. In 2023, the dream moved from vision to action. Farmers in Xinjiang scattered 100,000 rows of rose seeds across 50,000 mu, about 33 square kilometers, turning vast stretches of sand into experimental gardens. But this wasn't random planting. Every seed had a strategy behind it. Scientists studied the desert's terrain, wind patterns, and water sources to decide the best planting methods. Flat areas with more accessible water used block planting, creating dense clusters of roses, while the edges of sand dunes or wind-prone ridges used strip planting, forming protective lines that could resist erosion. To increase survival chances, they also employed a hybrid planting model. Tall trees were planted in the windiest spots to act as barriers, 
shrubs were interspersed to stabilize the sand, and roses filled the spaces in between. This careful combination of species created a living network where each plant protected the others, maximizing resilience against the desert's harsh forces. The scene was almost cinematic, rows of tiny seedlings, fragile yet full of potential, facing down the scorching sun, shifting sands, and powerful winds. A true test of human planning against nature. The first months were brutal. Fierce sandstorms swept across the desert, uprooting seedlings and burying others beneath shifting dunes. Many of the young plants withered under the scorching sun, and at first, it seemed that the experts' warnings had come true. The project might fail. But then something remarkable happened. Amid the devastation, researchers noticed that two-thirds of the newly planted rose seedlings had survived, while other plants, even those specifically chosen for desert greening, had largely died. In a place where survival seemed impossible, these roses had not only endured, they had thrived. This discovery stunned farmers and scientists alike. It hinted at a hidden resilience within the roses, something that could transform the way deserts were managed. What seemed like a simple flower was quietly revealing a natural ability to withstand extreme conditions. A breakthrough that would reshape the desert greening strategy and change the course of the experiment. So, what made these roses survive where almost everything else failed? The answer lay underground. Scientists discovered that rose roots can penetrate up to three meters deep into the sand, anchoring themselves in a way that no other plant could. At the same time, the roots spread horizontally, creating a network that locks the sand in place like a natural net. Above ground, the rose's dense branches and tightly packed leaves act as a natural windbreaker. They slow down the desert winds, reduce soil erosion, and shield the plants themselves from the harshest elements. Essentially, each rose is not just a flower. It's a mini fortress against the desert, stabilizing its surroundings while thriving. This insight transformed desert planting strategies. By understanding how roses could both survive and protect the soil, scientists and farmers realized they could use them not just for beauty, but as a practical tool for desert control turning the fragile desert edge into a strong green barrier. Once scientists understood the rose's resilience, they refined how to plant them for maximum survival. In flat areas near water, they used block planting, creating dense clusters that could support each other. On windy sand ridges or dunes, they switched to strip planting, laying roses in protective lines that could withstand shifting sands. But roses alone weren't enough. Farmers and scientists implemented a three-layer planting system. Tall trees at the windiest edges acted as natural shields. Shrubs intertwined with rose roots to stabilize sand, and roses filled the spaces in between. This combination not only protected the roses, but also gradually improved the desert's soil structure. Every planting decision was backed by careful observation of wind patterns, sand movement, and water availability. Farmers in Yuchin County worked closely with researchers, treating the desert like a living laboratory. The result was a coordinated, intelligent approach, turning raw desert land into an environment where roses could not only survive, but flourish. The Takamakan Desert is, honestly, just unforgiving. Annual rainfall here is less than 80 millimeters, while evaporation often exceeds 2,000 millimeters. So any water that does fall quickly disappears into the dry air. On top of that, you've got scorching summer heat and freezing winter nights, which, you know, create extreme stress for any plant. To help the roses survive, farmers and scientists didn't just rely on natural conditions. Instead, they introduced artificial rainfall techniques, carefully supplementing water during those really critical growth periods. This not only cooled the plants, but also helped prevent drought-related die-offs during the harsh summer months. Technology and human intervention played a key role, but it wasn't about forcing nature. It was about working with it intelligently. By understanding seasonal water flows, snowmelt from nearby mountains, and groundwater reserves, they made sure the roses received just enough water to thrive. 
This combination of careful planning and hands-on solutions turned a seemingly impossible desert into a place where life could, well, actually flourish. At first, you know, a lot of local farmers were pretty hesitant to join the desert greening project. Planting roses in the harsh Takamakan desert was labor-intensive, risky, and honestly, it seemed unlikely to bring much profit. For months, some farmers simply watched from the sidelines, waiting to see if the experiment would actually succeed. The turning point came when the government introduced financial incentives. Farmers were offered subsidies of 3 to 4 wen per mu for planting roses, creating a direct reward for participating in sand control. Suddenly, the project became not only environmentally meaningful, but also economically worthwhile. This policy sparked a wave of enthusiasm. Farmers who had been skeptical rushed to join the planting efforts, turning the project into a real, community-driven mission. The combination of science, strategy, and smart incentives showed that large-scale desert transformation isn't just about planting seeds. It's about aligning human motivation with ecological goals. The Desert Rose Project didn't just change the landscape, it transformed the local economy. By 2024, more than 30 rose-based products were being developed in Yuchin County, including essential oils, flower teas, and cosmetics. Farmers were no longer just planting flowers, they were producing raw materials for a growing industry. The financial impact was significant. The entire desert rose industry increased farmers' income by tens of millions of yuan, while seasonal workers found employment in planting and harvesting. Tourism also boomed, with nearly 490,500 visitors coming to see the desert in full bloom, a 55% increase from the previous year generating millions of dollars in revenue. This project turned desert greening into a profitable, sustainable industry, showing that environmental restoration and economic development can go hand in hand. What started as a bold experiment had become a model for turning adversity into opportunity. Beyond economic gains, the roses brought major environmental benefits. Their dense roots and branches stabilize sand, reduce wind erosion, and create a buffer against the desert's shifting dunes. In effect, each rose acts like a tiny sand-fixing machine, gradually reshaping the landscape. Water use was also carefully managed. Farmers relied on drip irrigation, snowmelt from nearby Kunlun Mountains, and rich local groundwater, increasing water efficiency by about 50%. This means the roses thrive without overusing scarce water resources, proving that large-scale planting can coexist with sustainable desert management. The project demonstrates that environmental restoration doesn't have to conflict with resource conservation. By combining strategic planting, technology, and natural advantages, the Takamakan Desert is slowly being turned into a living, breathing ecosystem that can support both plants and people. The success of roses inspired farmers in Xinjiang to explore other desert-adapted crops, creating a broader vision for sustainable agriculture. One standout example is desert ginseng, or Shistanche deserticola, grown across 110,000 mu in the heart of the Takamakan Desert. Unlike traditional ginseng, which needs cool and humid conditions, this plant thrives in extreme drought scorching sun, and drastic temperature swings. Sistanche deserticola offers dual benefits. It's a valuable medicinal plant and a source of nectar for high-quality honey, allowing farmers to earn income from both agriculture and beekeeping. This innovative approach creates a virtuous cycle. Cultivating plants that survive in the desert improves the ecosystem while providing economic opportunities for local communities. The desert is no longer just a barren wasteland. It's becoming a laboratory for innovation, showing that with the right strategy, even the harshest environments can produce both ecological and economic rewards. From a barren sea of sand to 50,000 mu of blooming roses, the story of Xinjiang's desert transformation is a testament to human perseverance, scientific ingenuity, and careful planning. What began as a risky experiment turned into a thriving ecosystem, an economic engine, and a symbol of what's possible when humans work with nature instead of against it.
It makes you wonder if roses and desert ginseng can flourish in one of the harshest deserts on Earth. What else could humans achieve with the right combination of vision, science, and determination? If you're inspired by this journey and want to see more amazing stories of innovation and environmental triumph, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Join us as we continue to explore the extraordinary ways humans are shaping the world around us. The desert may have seemed impossible, but today it's a garden of possibility.